Hey guys, Mr. Rip here, and I had a question in my uh, Twitch stream asking about like how to identify heroes with different roles and like how the different positions work and things like that. So I wanted to give a quick overview of how that kind of works. So the basic idea in Dota is that there's five positions, right? One through five. Um, and basically the higher you are or the lower your number, so position one would be the highest, is your farm priority. And basically what that translates to is how much gold your hero needs to be effective and also how effective that hero is with gold. If you give a support a, a lot of gold, they're not going to be as effective as if you give these other carry heroes the same amount of gold, right? And generally that's because they don't have innate defense and they don't have innate scaling on their abilities. So as a really easy example, PA has crit as part of her hit. She doesn't have to buy that, right? So the more damage and attack speed you give her, the better it's going to be. Versus someone like AA in that example just doesn't have that. He just doesn't have any like kind of passive crit or like passive evasion or passive lifesteal, things like that. So I think a good way to start here, if you want to identify like where a hero falls, is to just literally go to attributes and just use these filters down here. Carry or support. And this basically means core or support. And you'll notice there is some overlap, right? So there are some heroes that fall into carry and support. The ones that do typically have strong uh, crowd control behind them. So like a Kunkka, right? Kunkka just has a lot of stuns and things like that. But he also has Tidebringer, and so he can do a lot of damage if you give him gold. The heroes that are purely carries, you'll notice, are typically lacking in a heavy crowd control. They typically have more passives in their kit. So people like Slardar, Wraith King, Legion Commander, Lifestealer, right? Lots of passives here that are only effective if you give them lots of gold. Um, versus a support is going to be very spell-based. So they very much rely on mana and good spell usage to do anything. And one thing I like to do when I'm trying to figure out which hero I should play in which role is if you have Dota Plus, go to this role assistant, sort it by divine down here because it's going to be more concentrated. If you notice, like Herald and Guardian is kind of a mess. Every hero is in every category. It's there's a lot of overlap here. Divine is going to be a lot more concentrated, and typically heroes are not going to get a lot of overlap between roles. And if we go look here, if we click carry while we're looking at this, we'll notice it's pretty accurate. Um, Every single hero here is classed as a carry in the safe lane role, right? And then it gets lower and lower as you go down in the roles. So like the soft support has five of them, the hard support has three of them. So it's a pretty literal translation versus the support. It's the exact inverse. We have the fewest amount of supports for the safe lane as we go. And then as we go down the roles, we get more and more and more. So even four has less support heroes than five because they're closer to being a core. So let's just give a quick overview of each uh, position. So the position one, typically going to be in the safe lane. That would be the radiant bottom lane or the dire top lane. Um, these are going to be your carries. If you're coming from League of Legends, that's like your AD carry, right? Need lots of gold, going to do a lot of damage later on in the game. And also an important part of their role is that eventually they're kind of expected to like take down towers and stuff like that. Obviously, some heroes are better than others. So example, for example, a sniper is much better at taking a tower than a slark, right? But typically they are expected to win the game later and destroy all the buildings. Pretty simple. The mid laner is also a core role that needs a lot of gold, but they also benefit a lot from XP. And some of these heroes benefit a lot more from XP than carries do. So as an example, like a Storm Spirit or a Zeus or a Pangolier, where the spells are the main aspect of the kit, and mainly what they're going to do with their gold is buff up their spell casting ability and their defense, as opposed to buying raw damage. You don't typically buy a Daedalus on a Storm Spirit, right? You buy like a BKB or a Lincolns or an Orchid or lots of mana regen, things like that. Now, the offlane is where we're getting into a blend of core and support. And so these heroes are going to be a lot about utility. There's basically two types of offlaners, and that's the tank and the initiator. So the quintessential tank offlaner is like Bristleback, right? Abaddon, things like that. They're just very, very tanky. And if you leave them alone, they'll do a lot of damage. But their main job is to kind of get initiated on 
draw a lot of fire and do a lot of damage in the process. They're a meat shield, basically. Now, other heroes are going to be initiators. They're usually going to want a Blink Dagger. That'll be things like Legion Commander, Mars, Magnus, Axe, uh, maybe a Sand King, Darkseer, Doom can do that too. Enigma is a really good example. And a lot of these heroes, say Axe, Enigma, and Legion Commander, are very much like Blink heroes, right? An Axe or a Legion without a Blink can kind of be not so great. They, they really need the Blink to do the role. They can't just tank up. They're very much based on surprise initiation, getting good positioning with a blink, right? They want to hit multiple heroes with their spells. Not Legion, but like Axe and Enigma. They want to blink into five heroes and get a really good initiation on them. So these are still core. They need, they definitely need items to do their job. But once they have their items, their core items, say a blink dagger, a blade mail, a BKB or whatever, they actually don't need to farm as much. They need to keep up in levels a little bit but because mainly the draw of their kit is innate tankiness and their spells being effective, they actually don't need a lot of gold to do that. They just need some items to do it. Um, that's why they're lower on the priority. Uh, now, the soft support and the hard support are kind of hard to distinguish from each other. So the four is kind of like a mini offlaner in a lot of instances. Not all of them, but... I, when I think of a four, I usually think of the quintessential fours. So I think of like Clockwork, Earth Spirit, Earth Shaker, um, maybe a Nyx, Spirit Breaker. Usually these are going to be flavored for really good stuns, really high damage, or like really good lane domination, right? Like someone like Venomancer would fall into that. Um, they don't need a lot of items, but they might need a few small items or one core item to do their job. Um, and they are still expected to do some warding and things like that. Another di thing that's different about the 4 and the 5 a little bit is that the 4 has traditionally been expected to rotate between the lanes a little bit more, try and help mid with runes, try to gank other lanes. In this patch, that means using the twin gates, things like that, TPing around a lot. Um, and 4 is, I honestly think 4 is one of the harder roles to figure out because it's very much a blend between like core and support. And it's it's hard to play four and not fall into the habits of playing a five where you end up buying all these wards or buying too many save items or picking heroes that are typically hard supports in the four role. That doesn't usually tend to work out super well. So as an example, like picking an Oracle four, not so good if you already kind of have a five, right? You just have two squishy backliners now you kind of want someone that can go a bit of ham in the four role. Not always, but that's usually the trend. Now the five is typically going to be, he's going to, they're going to operate with the least amount of gold. They're going to be expected to do the most warding, the most stacking. They're supposed to be the most sacrificial. Now, a lot of these fives can scale with items as well. So for example, like, um, you know, a warlock, right? If you give a warlock Ag's refresher, he's actually kind of scary. But the thing is, he doesn't need those items to do his job. Really, all he's got to do is cast all his spells in a fight, and he's good. He's contributed, right? And apart from that, as long as he's not, like, whiffing the spells, as long as he's still buying a few, like, save items, like Glimmer Cape and Force Staff and things like that, and buying wards for his team, then he's pretty much doing his job. And so that's kind of an overall thing. It's basically, one wants the most gold, five wants... Five needs the least gold. Obviously, everybody wants gold. If you can get your whole team farmed, that's an advantage. Don't feel like you're not supposed to farm in any of these roles. The real trick here is that the lower you are in the priority, you're not supposed to farm at the expense of other heroes. So if the five is stealing last hits in front of the one, that's usually bad, and that'll make one's rage, right? But everybody needs some gold so don't feel like you can't farm anywhere you know if it's 10 minutes and you still haven't bought your brown boots as a five go farm a camp go steal a lane right like an empty lane preferably but you do need some gold to sustain yourself and that just goes that's more and more important as you go up in the rolls so i hope that helps if it was helpful let me know if you have any questions about that leave a comment down below um i stream every weekday on twitch about 2.30 p.m. PST onwards. And I have a Dota coaching playlist. I'll link that at the end of the video. 
And once again, my name is Mr. Rip, and I hope to see you in another video. Thanks. Bye.